Excellent. Uh, hello, Samuel Crocker. What's good? What's good? Uh, what is good? A lot is good. I'm having a great start to the <laughs> year. Yeah, a lot is going really well right now. Well, that's good. Yeah, bro. January is a complete contrast to the entire of 2021, 2020. And I'm, I'm here for it. I feel like 2020 wasn't, wasn't too bad for me. Like it was. Like but. it was, like, a, like it really was, but you know what I mean? Like, um, I think I, I kind of made the most of, of what was there, I guess. You know what I mean? I like that attitude. Mm. Before, before we get into it, I'm joined by uh, Sam Crocker, uh, lead vocalist and driving force behind the New Zealand born Australian based hardcore band Antagonist AD. You're also just opening a new little Muay Thai studio mm. and just an all round road dog. You're, uh, the <laughs> tour, you're a tour manager for a lot of uh, hardcore medical bands, perhaps most notably Amity Affliction. Mm-hmm. Anything else I'm missing in this glorif- glorious introduction? No, that's pretty good. I think that's, that's yeah, that's enough. <laughs> That's enough. And you're currently sitting where? Um, at Green Lotus Tattoo in Brunswick, Melbourne. Ah, beautiful. Which is a, a shop that I've, I've, that I've um, looked after me really well. Like ever since I moved over to Australia, always gave me a home in between tours. And I actually stopped working here for a long time. But since COVID came back in and we can't tour, it's been my base again. So they welcomed me back in. It's good. What's the deal with COVID? I keep I can't keep up anymore. Like it's all the time, and I'm freaking out. And I follow yeah. different people in different geographic locations, and everyone's different. What's the deal it's in Melbourne? For everyone, though? right? Yeah, because it's different, it's, different this, all around the world. Yeah, and it's hard to hard for me to understand. Um, I have limited bandwidth. What's your deal? Yeah, uh, with us, we in Melbourne. It just kind of feels Melbourne's kind of relatively life as per normal mm-hmm. you wear masks when you go to the supermarket um you probably went meant to wear masks in other places like you know you're going to the hardware store or something there's probably other places you're meant to do that I, I haven't really paid too much attention um public transport stuff like that other than that everything's open you, you can have shows at a smaller capacity now um venues are allowing like kind of like moshing and, and kind of close contact stuff which is cool um but there's a general kind of like it feels like an axe is kind of swinging yeah, above yeah. everyone as soon as like the cases come up because we're like oh we're gonna go into a lockdown again um but yeah it's there's some semblance of normality here which is pretty cool because for, uh, for our international viewers melbourne had like a, a what was it an eight month lockdown is that right yeah i think i think total i think it was six months back to back and then there was in between that there was like three weeks that we were able to open and there was two months prior to that damn that was locked down so how, did crazy. You, how did you stay sane, sane for that well i got out of melbourne both times both times right. i was in sydney um i didn't skip the border like illegally I, I worked within the parameters of what i was allowed to do um but it's still really hard because i didn't have being a new zealander over here and I haven't lived there for that long i didn't get any government assistance sure. and i was also not able to kind of like work a normal job because when i went to sydney for the second lockdown i thought i was only going to be there for two weeks I ended up being there for six months which is insane um so like you know i didn't I couldn't really kind of go get a job because it's kind of like i might be leaving next week like who, who knows how long it was meant to go for but there was definitely like i came back and everyone was pretty appreciative and excited to get outside but there was that general like beaten down you know what i mean like a, a whole state beaten down by it which is pretty crazy i'm really yeah. curious to look at as time emerges like the data around mental health and stuff like that you know mm. like like I've know that in New Zealand, our um, incidence of family harm went up. Our incidence yep. of alcohol consumption like exploded. Uh, porn use. I think. Mm. I think anything that people, uh, any sort of like negative statistic, kind of increased in lots of. Yeah. Like, you know. A lot yeah. Of, it really highlighted how lots of people can't live with themselves. They don't have emotional yeah. regulation tools. 
or yeah. communicative tools. And I, I'm curious to know if that's a universal experience. I think so. People are calling for statistics to be released here and they, they haven't, I think they've kind of been, I don't know if they're being guarded or it's something that they can't really release until it's like annually, you know what I mean? Mm. When they gather it properly. But everyone I know that had pre-existing mental health issues that were diagnosed pre-existing mental health issues, pretty much all had like some form of breakdown and, and really had them amplify through the time, um, which is really, really scary. And I think a lot of other people that I know as well kind of discovered mental health issues that they may or may not have had present prior to the lockdown. So, I mean, six months is a, a long time too, man, to be stuck within, you know, potentially bad situations. And then that general, like, there wasn't much financial assistance offered from the government for businesses. So a lot of small business owners, owners really suffered too. But it's hard, man. And it's, it's something great that people don't really take um, seriously. Mean to how? It's not, yeah. Like, just in general, like, it's, it's gone like, okay, we're going to lock down like all that is the hey if you're feeling like this like where's that next yeah where's you know support, what i mean right yeah. yeah yeah where's the tangible tools not just because you know i think i think we have pretty much normalized the ask for help conversation that's out there a lot at least yeah. in, in the circles we move in and, and yeah guess, definitely but um that's really hard to do like if you are suffering from anxiety or depression or some sort of post-traumatic stress uh, or any other sort of mental health or personal disorder can be really hard to ask for help. I think we need to give people tools on how to offer help. Yeah. It actually works, you know, give people a whole range yeah. of and options. And you're right, like that's not necessarily easily communicated or communicated at all or well communicated by agencies. I think that's a big gap that we need to continue to work on. Yeah, well, that whole ask for help, right? That's just opening the door. That's the that's dialing yeah. the number on the phone. Yeah, like, yeah, you yeah. Know? And then, and how many how many people know that next step too? Like, yeah, you know, yeah. you're asking your friend that they are like, I'm here for you, but like, they don't even know really. A lot of people don't know how to be here for them, and a lot of you know, there's so many intricacies with all the different things that sometimes different forms of help and tough love and and everything it, it just can be can create a problem too you know what i mean like and then you you could try it once and then not necessarily get shut down but not really kind of get passed along to the next step and then it kind of makes you not want to ask for help again yeah yeah, yeah. when you reach out and it's not it, you don't get the response that you'd hope for it can yeah shut you down from asking you that's a really good point yeah. You talk about, you know, you have been in your band Antagonist AD for how long? How long has your band been? Oh band? man, so long. I, I get actually quite embarrassed like, talking about how long we've been together. It's so strange. I think 2006. I think we were jamming in 2005 and maybe played some shows at the end of 2005, so 2006. So I'm not sure what that is. Is that 15 years now? Yeah, it's 15 much. years, dog. Yeah. And, and yeah. your band's always taking that hardcore ethos of talking about social issues. And I've seen mm. you on stage talk about mental health and how the hardcore scene, the, the middle scene has been a, a healthy space for catharsis. Do you get a lot of like uh, fans getting in touch about? Yeah. Yeah, I do. And it's, um, it's actually really um, humbling every time. I'm not usually sure what to say. Um, back to it but it's yeah it's really really touching because it's it's I find it's like I, I just think of me being a kid and just talking to talking to the bands that influenced me as I was growing up there wasn't too many that I could because of when I was younger they, we didn't really have that medium where we can kind of like talk to people directly like we do now but you know bands like Gedra from Hamilton I used to like <laughs> I don't know how I got their emails but I used to just email them all the time like that you know what I mean different like just them generally inspiring me to be a musician and, and make music and be creative but um just that man like having that music to escape to and inspire you to do something creative and productive is good so when I get those same messages and especially when it's very specific like I was in a really dark place and these particular lyrics got me through thank you man it, it means so much you can't really it's hard to describe it because anything the, the way you describe it just sounds kind of trivial like it really yeah I don't know how to kind of encapsulate that feeling that it gives you because it's insane it's like humbling it's kind of like embarrassing because you're like why 
what do you mean? I'm just an idiot. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, what have I done? But for them to like connect, you you just you get like a really really nice feeling. It's awesome. What do you what do you tell people who might have real serious issues? Do or do you, do you get them towards helplines or how? how yeah, you- definitely. It's 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 always trying to do not be afraid of professional help. And you know, there's there's always generally the first like first port is like no matter it's the same goes for anyone anyone anywhere like no matter what you've done what path you've walked whatever whatever's happened there's always someone that loves you like no matter where you are always try and let them know that and then to go try and seek professional help you know what I mean um so that's been the biggest thing that's helped me um and and break the cycle Cause I'll be like, okay, you know what I mean? Cause you can have all these little things that manage you for a little bit, all these uh, healthy coping mechanisms. Um, but they they can only keep you afloat for so long if you've got something truly heavy under the surface. So yeah, just, just getting them along to professional help and trying to take away that stigma. Like if you look up to me and you're, you're reaching out to me, like, yo, go, go see it. Like I'm cool with it. You should be cool that there's no, like, there's no weird, um, yeah, stigma attached to it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, totally. I can, I can, I concur. <laughs> what are some of the healthy coping mechanisms you recommend to people? Or Man, it's crazy. Like, how do you, how do you manage your own mental wellbeing? Well, I've been trying to, I've been, I've been thinking about this a lot lately just because of um, different friends who are having like bad times and uh, an Instagram page that we both follow. I think you actually shared it to me. It was an actual psychology one, which oh, I yeah, find Laura. is like, She's great. Yeah, I, it, I find it like quite challenging sometimes because she does a lot of things that question different things that I I would do or that I appreciate or would hold a lot of value in, which mm. I this is half the reason why I follow her because it's really interesting to see who com- combat some of those things in a healthy way. Mm. But generally, just, oh, man, everything they, they tell you to do, like that just seems you so know, ridiculous. I'm t- like I'm taking the box. Sleep. Yeah. you know sleep drink more water like eat better like don't drink so much coffee you know what i mean like just just those things exercise you know those things are just it's it's like um they're, they're just basics you should do that all the time and then that's yeah that's that's easy and then anything else is you need to see someone you know what i mean so it's, it's like basically you eat healthy and you might start feeling sick right or you're eating really bad and you feel sick because i've only ate burgers for a week like what are you going to do next week you're not going to have a burger because you feel sick because you just ate them for a week right it's the same type of thing except this for your brain it's that thing you were talking about um recently when you're talking about that mental fitness I, that really resonated with oh, me word, we talked yeah. about that yeah yeah. yeah yeah i like that the bro jimmy hunt who's a like a mental health educator and advocate based he actually lives in mexico mexico Oaxaca, I think, mm-hmm. for half the year. Or, or uh, Puerto Escondido. Anyway, regardless, he uses the term mental fitness because people yeah. use words like mental illness and mental health kind of interchangeably. And we all have mental health, mm-hmm. which goes from a high point to a low point, and then it's a low point where we have mental illness. And he talks about we need to keep our mental fitness well, the same as we need our physical fitness. And yeah. you say it's easy, but it's surprising that it's it's actually it's not surprising that's wrong it's actually quite hard for lots of people like oh, definitely. Lot, and, and i think our broader social structures uh aren't conducive to good mental health like i don't think the modern system works like there's so much economic pressure there are so many different uh drivers of anxiety that um our ancestors never used to have to deal with social mm. media is fucking it's like TNT for your, your mental well-being if you're on it too much and if you're in certain circles. And it's about helping people actually live, I think, like a countercultural life. You know, mm. I would argue that so many people are physically unwell and mentally unwell because they, for no fault of their own, have been trapped by that. You know, wake up, work hard, uh, do a job you don't really like, make lots of money party to forget about it sort of cycle and then it's like what the fuck i'm i'm Mm -hmm. not happy you know it's like those those old sort of early 2000 fight club narratives are still part and parcel of a lot of people's lives and how do you help them get out of that for their well-being yeah i find it it's it's interesting right like um 
how you know people obviously talking about mental health is so commonplace these days and everyone kind of knows like the basic go-tos and the basic um you know the words all around it like triggers yeah. and, yeah, and all those yeah, things yeah. everyone knows i'm the almost now. sick of it to be honest like the jargon of it well it's kind of cheapened it and people talk yeah. about um you know totally. what I mean? They, they talk about having a panic attack because they can't find the thing that the item that they wanted in a store. And it's just like, well, you're not really having a panic attack. You know what I mean? Like, yes. or maybe yeah. you are, maybe you are like, that's, I can't say that the broad picture, yes, but you yes, know what yes. I mean? Like, but, yeah. but saying stuff like that, um, kind of devalues like I, those well, actual, those things. Yeah. I really love that you say that Sam, cause it, for me, it, it takes the power out of language. I'm like, mm. if this is, trauma or well, what is this like yeah. if, if uh, i don't know someone didn't text you back and that's traumatic for you what what language do you use for someone who was like ab abused somehow like physically yeah. you know I'm, do you know what i mean like that's perhaps not the best example but no i know i definitely know what you're saying and it's a it's a tricky it's a tricky um landscape to to try and like convey as well because it's you don't want to yeah it, it's it's hard you got to choose your words carefully when you're talking about that kind of stuff but i understand completely because yeah it's not all on the same there's different levels to things and and, yeah. and everything has its own merits for sure yeah um and and different things manifest for different people in different ways obviously but yeah, yeah it's yeah. um it, it's it's crazy you, you just i just my meaning is is that you, you think everyone kind of knows better but because everyone talks about it it's almost lost the actual you know what i mean like yeah, everyone no. just uses everything for smaller things so yeah yeah actual, yeah yeah like the, the language, language is commonplace but the the tangible actions aren't embedded in our broader cultural mm -hmm. uh understandings and lifestyles and i think that's what needs to happen and i think we do need as a community to take ownership of that like i would love to go and tour with like bands all mm. the time be like you've done cocaine every day this week it's probably not very <laughs> fucking good for your mental health yeah. i, I know you the bad time today <laughs> i know because and, 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 and you know we're, we're, you know but that's the thing how many artists do you know have a breakdown and they're like then we'll continue to live that lifestyle and that's not anyone's fault but if there were people in those spaces like to help redirect them and give them professional help and um walk alongside them and say embed those changes fuck i'd love to be one of those people i'd love That's to real. you know remember like um brandon chapetta used to have rise above fitness on walk tour yeah. i'd love to yeah. do something like that but also embed some ideas around sensible substance use talking about mental health i reckon so... i reckon labels should i mean labels aren't as powerful as they used to be in their boat don't have the budget so they they had they had historically but something needs to change. You know what I mean? Because the sort of person who will make a lifestyle out of music is off the sort of person having been around music my whole life that does carry some, some actual baggage, some actual trauma, some actual predisposition to shitty mental health and everything is on the table. It's like the worst environment really to That's stay crazy. mentally well. It's like, here are the crazy relationships. Here are the fans. Here's like the empty validation. Here's the drugs. Yeah. Here's the alcohol. Every fucking day. Every day. And it's, I think. Um, and it's, I think and, people. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, sorry, I, that's... I'd love to see the industry or whatever the fuck we call it these days offer some current to narratives for, for artists. Well, I think it's hard, like especially at the level most of most of our friends' bands and stuff are at. Like they're they're very they pretty much biggest fans of their of their genre but there's there's still not enough money to and there's not enough kind of care because that that lifestyle is still glamorized you know and yeah. i think that like you were saying that the type of people that attract to it like like myself like you know you, you really feel a lot of things and you know what i mean like you feel i feel like we feel things extra like extra passionate and you're extra you know what i mean you, you take hold of these things and you sit with them and then if you're singing about these um parts of your life that can be quite heavy you're doing it every night as well and then other people are constantly coming up to you and going here's this heavy experience that i'm relating to you on you're constantly in that cycle and it's like the weekend, like you're saying, every single night, like you you get to the venue at 10 a.m. and there's a fridge full of beer and, and whatever else spirits. And you start like as a tour manager, I grab spirits and I hide them until like 
6 p.m. And and that's ridiculous yeah. to 6 p.m. Like, you know, and sometimes I'm going to get out earlier, but I try and like hide it for as long as possible. Um, so you're an artist? And yeah, not, and, and not I feel fucked up. Is that right? Yeah, like you're, yeah, you're, yeah. Right. So they and they won't. So and they the thing is, is that it's continuous. So take, like, yeah. if they, if they, yeah. And the thing is, is that they, um, when they do it every day, if they didn't have any mental health issues to start with, you know how obviously drinking and um, taking whatever substances is generally in our industry starts becoming some type of self medication. And and if they keep doing it for the whole for a whole tour. You can do a tour and then all of a sudden, like, I have a problem. You know what I mean? From a single tour. You know what I mean? Like, it's just the, the constant repetition. And if you're trying to mask something, it might be something bad happening at home. You might not be feeling good on the road. But that constant um, escape catches up, you know? So, yeah. And, and people will just, if, if the bottles are out every day, I've seen it before on tour, like, you know, the people just start drinking that bottle a day to themselves. And then you have oh, like three or four bottles on the rider. It's very common. You have three or four bottles on the rider and they get finished every night, you know, by maybe not the entire tour party. Maybe it's only a couple. But yeah, it's just a, like, how is that too? Like you get there and you just have snacks and alcohol every day. And it's not like you get there and like, Hey, here's like um, some really healthy food, and there's a we we do that now. Like there's these these gyms in the area, and there's these different things you can do. But for the general band, it's here's all the booze and some unhealthy snacks, and that's like every day yeah, for five yeah. weeks. And then yeah. you wonder why you <laughs> feel, feel like, like shit. absolute shit. Yeah, yeah, I'm grateful. The the, Arch the boys in architects have, as you know, like taken me on tour with them a few times. And I oh, yeah, but that, that, they're that, like uh, good boys. But even they're then, like they're like. Boys. They were like, if you weren't here, we wouldn't go to yoga every day. Because I'm like, yo, we're going to yoga or we're going to do some weights or whatever. And that, that's kind of my shit. I would love to, I would love to create like an army of like PMA dudes to like just mm. spread through the music industry, you know, because it breaks mm. my heart. It, you know, I'm not of the hip hop community, but how many artists have we lost lately? You know, you know, Mac oh, Miller man. and Little Peep and I just, uh, yeah, and you, Juice you just World said... and like really. Is Juice really... World dead? Yo, he died. <laughs> when? Like last year. He died of like an Dude, overdose I started, or whatever. I started listening to him like two months ago. This is crazy oh, to me. The other thing, everyone like has a, a, the sick back catalog that they put out posthumously. It's, yeah. yeah. You know, like weird. didn't he, he was he's on some features lately and he's dead. And, yeah, and it's crazy. Yeah, it, it makes me sad. Like it genuinely hurts my heart, you know? And um yeah, I don't know. People say might say Machine Gun Kelly is too pop these days, but I really, I really like him. And he had that that track Glass House, and he lists off all these different artists who died, like Chester Bennington and stuff. Chokes me up. Listen to that, and I truly think if supports are in place, industry wide and in the music community, fucking, I don't know, these really talented people who actually inspire people and help other people through their journeys would still be with us. Definitely. I think I I think that especially with with that world, the the people who are marketing them love that the lost souls. You know what I mean? Love that the lost souls taking all this medication, medication. You know what I mean? And and they use that to promote them. They're not going, hey, maybe you should not do that. You know, maybe you should look after yourself can because you, it's, it's part of their image. You know? Can you flesh it out for me? Can you tell me tell me a story? Like uh, I just I just mean any of those guys you're talking about. Like just listen to the lyrics um that they're singing about you know if yeah, they're talking yeah. about taking all these different pills um they don't have the the people who are looking after them who are making money off them they're not going to go to them hey maybe uh you know still sing about taking the pills but maybe don't take as much you know maybe don't <laughs> yeah, take any yeah, like yeah. Is, is everything okay you're, you're rapping about wanting to kill yourself is everything all good it's just more like that song's pretty good you know what i mean like yeah that's crazy it's so many of those artists music is this enormous cry for help i mean from amy winehouse out to juice yeah. world out to anyone yeah and you're right even on the even on the lower on the lower level like um a million bands we know like you know all, all the people who usually talk about wanting to to kill themselves are suicidal or, or have been suicidal you know, know what i mean like i it's, worry about that it's it's um 
it's everywhere you know it's not you know <laughs> i get when i was on you know you uh i came on amity with the whoop tour i went on the whoop tour yeah. with and the boys from amity that was really kind thanks amity um that was a good time but i gave a brother a copy of like russell brand's recovery because i was mm. so i i was so like i don't know what to do i was really worried about them and it's like how do you normalize that though you know because we we surround ourselves with people who make us feel comfortable and if everyone's got the same unhealthy behaviors it's kind of becomes normal right definitely it's a challenging one it reminds um, me a lot of like high school like people drinking at parties and then you kind of you leave and then just that kind of like um you know not 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 to say that musicians are trying to outdo themselves with the drinking at their drinking but just that that normality mm. and if people are drinking proper heavy like you know i'm saying before like if people are drinking a bowl a day then someone who's drinking half a bowl a day looks at them and just like i'm fine because <laughs> <I'm good, laughs> like, yeah. uh, yeah. <laughs> if that's their medium you know like yeah yeah hard. yeah i'm on top of my shit out of the water. Yeah. yeah um do you think some people worry that if they get like the whole tortured artist thing, they're like, I don't know what I'd sing about. I don't know what my image would be if I got better. I think so. I think a lot of people would be scared to lose their, lose their image. If that's what they, they built their, um, their kind of like a uh, public profile off because I think that is, that's definitely a huge part. And I, and I do think that there is some type of credibility to that um you know what i mean to thinking like that there's but like an identity look, right like yeah like, and yeah. i and i think yeah and it's kind of like playing the role and i i think a lot of i think i think that's credible though but i think you obviously should never be defined there's so many things that you should not be defined by and that is <laughs> you know that's right up there but like look at someone like joel 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 was um notorious alcoholic um, our friend Joel Birch, and he's been sober for, I'm going to say he's coming up three years. He, yeah. He'll probably tell me off because that's probably wrong. It's probably been longer, but he's been sober for three years. He's still, he's no, still, it has been longer. Um, it was end of 2016, even, I think, be closer mm, to five. Yeah. And he's, he's, um, he's a uh, changed man. Um, he still was obviously fighting his uh, mental um issues and still thinks uh, still sings about like the similar things um so and and you know he was uh drunk joel you know what i mean like so he he, he kind of went from that to to who he is now and there's no kind of it's a good example you know there's no like backlash there's no no one taking him no one losing respect for him or anything like that if anything people have gained more respect for him yeah because he's so open about his struggle and how alcohol and mm. drugs ne literally nearly killed him and um, definitely and how people should ask for help he carries a big weight because he does have a big following and he's really open about mental health and i do worry about yeah. like you said like you're not well and then all these other people are heaping there like i'm struggling this hurts from all around the yeah. world that can be hard man it's like yeah. a, a painful feedback loop mm. yeah it's a, it's, a, it's a good conversation to continue to have so outside of music and and what are you spending your time doing lately? Well, you ever just... since March, 2020, whenever um, COVID came through, I haven't been able to do anything musically. We, we've been doing stuff with the band, which we recorded an album with Antagonist, we recorded an album in 2019, which we're releasing in three different parts, which we're, we've done like a couple of things for as much as we can with the restrictions. Um, so coming up pretty soon, like next month, we'll be hopefully putting out some new music. But aside from that, I was just literally sitting around for like three months trying to work out what am I going to do, <laughs> you know, my everything that I've built my life upon, like outside of like a normal grid, like, like normal work has just been made absolutely redundant. It's insane. It's like COVID, like the script for COVID was written perfectly for me. Like, you know, no traveling, no large events. Like, it's ridiculous. Yeah, right. Um, but yeah, it was cool. I, I used the time to, um, again, like talking about ho uh, healthy um, coping mechanisms. I used the time, like I stopped drinking in February, um, be a year, yeah, like next month. Really? Um, I oh, that's no so drinking. awesome, bro. I mean, yeah, it's, 
I didn't realize that you'd stuck with that. That's amazing. I'm so proud of you. Oh, oh, oh it feels good. Um, but it's just one of those things that I knew, like coming up a couple of tools and if I was stuck inside the whole time, um, I'd reach a point where I'd get bored and then I'd start just drinking constantly. And then that would take away any type of drive that I might have. I just know myself, you know what I mean? I know what's going to set me off and how I cope with things. So I just wanted to eliminate that, that, that option, you know, and I just put all my time into getting fit again and then rediscovered my love of Muay Thai, which has obviously always been there all through these years. Um, and then like a series of events happened and now I'm about to open up this Thai boxing gym Good, yeah, out yeah. of nowhere. It's dope. But, um, yeah. And it's the same thing. Like, um, we're talking about like healthy coping mechanisms still is like most of my clients are tattooists um, who I've met over the years or musicians who are trying to break their cycle of relying on unhealthy coping mechanisms. Right. So they come in and see me once or twice a week and then just enjoying like, you know, a lot of people have, especially on, if you're on that side of the fence, um, you know, you like going to bars instead of going to the gyms, there's usually some type of like, you don't want to go there. Like it just, it doesn't feel like you're seen. So like them coming in and just learning how to punch and um, kind of accidentally getting fit and, and enjoying the process of getting fit, like the endorphins and everything, just sneaking up on them. It's good. It's been awesome. It's been cool to see the the changes of a lot of people like over the last like three months, okay. seeing, seeing, proper changes in people like people getting up at like 6 30 to come um hit the pads with me is awesome you know what i mean yeah, when usually yeah, they'd yeah. be getting home from a night out at 6 30 you know so. yeah that's great bro I, i'm really stoked to hear, to, to hear that that's really really mm. cool i can't wait to watch it unfold how do people find your um studio we're about to melbourne are you guys we're in fairfield um we're inside a pre-existing fitness gym called northside fitness so we just have a it used to be a little yoga room on the side there and they, they stopped having yoga just because of COVID. Um, so yeah, we just, we moved in. The space is awesome. I've, I've had all of my things. It, it was just one of those things that everything just started to, to fall into place perfectly. So I just, I've always wanted to open up a space eventually and, and try and just do the same thing you do. You know what I mean? Like you try and like just help people and spread positivity and, and, I want to get um, some community type things coming through it as well, Sick. helping like people who wouldn't normally afford the gym, try and get them in for free, stuff like that. But um, it's just not something that I expect to do now. You know, I thought it'd be kind of like road dogging it nonstop <laughs> yeah. for at least another few years. Yeah. But who knows what will happen when touring starts again. I'm hopefully I can set this up so it can kind of be its own thing Yeah. Um, and keep going for a little bit. But at the moment, that's going to be my, my main focus for the, for the next 12 months. Dude, that's awesome. I'm real psyched on that, man. I love that. We were kind of doing what we've just been talking about, really, right? You're like in the space and you're like, yo, guys less crack more mm. um right right, right kicks <laughs> yeah that's, <laughs> no, it's cool it's cool man it's and it's like um it's just awesome like just just every every step of the way like the remind i i see uh so many different people in the in the in different stages of when people come in and and they just like they get something and they're just so excited with themselves and yeah or like certain things might remind me of myself at a different time and coming through and the different i'm like oh man i know this hurdle that you're about to go through and here's my experience in it because i got through this and you're having a really bad time now but you know what like when you go past it's gonna be so sick and being able to be like you're struggling so much now but like look how excited i am because i know that as soon as when you, you get, get through this, this little bit it's gonna be so sick it's, yeah, bro. It's, it's awesome i've become i've become you know i'm constantly evolving and rethinking my take on things and i actually think we need some hardship in our life because to traverse through it makes us deeper richer people and it's not to uh discount the real pain that, you know, I've experienced and you've experienced and, you know, millions of people around the world are experiencing. But if we can learn from those difficult times, it actually kind of enriches the human experience. You know, like mm. it's actually, it's impossible to live a painless life. It's impossible to, 
um, live a life where people aren't going to die or let us down or break our hearts or we're not going to break someone's hearts and there's injuries mm -hmm. and accidents and this the power structures are unfair and you know society is pretty uh, unjust still in lots of ways despite it improving but all of those shitty things if we can work through them and not avoid them just like training you know you lift mm -hmm. weights you, you get stronger you experience mm -hmm. all those difficult things you get stronger as a human being yeah, that's dope, bro. I'm psyched on that. It's, um, it's funny. Eh? I feel like I, um, it's like, you know, everything, everything you said, like I, I found ever since teaching people, you want to say like, you know, all the cheesy quotes bro, that you hear. People bro, give me a hard so time true. for, but it's so true. It's so true. Bro, I, can't people, even, I can't even do it. Bro, side. I'm all about it. You know, like cynical hipsters will go out of the way to make fun of um, my earnest cheesy quotes. Mm. Uh, I don't give a fuck like it's actually true and it actually just because it's not for you doesn't mean it's not valid you know what I mean because all those yeah. things are grounded in truth yeah. what's well, that whole thing like it's just like how can I say this this thing uh to this person at the moment that's so succinct and quick and then I'm like blah 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 powerful like, quote uh, <laughs> pain is weakness leaving the body dog <laughs> <laughs> And every time I said, I'm like, I'm so sorry, but like, I mean, what are your favorites? That's why I have go to. I have go tos. My go to is like, okay, so your stance is your foundation, right? It's like childhood. If it's fucked up, nothing else is going to work real good. Oh, <laughs> you know, like, I have a whole range of them. What are some of your favorites? Oh, dude, mine, mine have honestly, they, I just come up with them. They, I don't even like have, they, they're not there to go. I'll just be talking and then they'll come out and, be, and then I'll be like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I said Don't that. Don't be sorry. You it's the, real. Just stop it. Just it's real. It. I'll start writing them down. I'm going to start texting you every time I say one. You should write like, them I'll down and you should put them on t-shirts. I'm going to put them on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> I, can't, <laughs> I can't take your um your marketing strategy, my bro. <laughs> right, speaking of which, I need you to do me a new t-shirt. That'll probably mm. never happen, but I've got I'm a busy man, but I will try. Yeah. No, it's, try. no, take it. Take the marketing strategy and run with it. You know, like, mm. uh, it's actually dope when you see someone wearing your shirt that you don't know personally. Oh, it's crazy. You I know? see it pop up all the time. Like on the Instagram explore page, there'll be someone wearing one of your t-shirts. I'm like, I don't even know how that, you know, someone from <laughs> a really? different country. Yeah. I see it all the time. Like, how is that even a thing? I, but, I just um, gave Israel to sign you one of my shirts. Uh, uh, that felt good. I'm like, thanks, homie. I appreciate that. Mm. Representing. Mm. <laughs> um well this has been a genuine pleasure um you won't be coming home anytime soon i guess as soon as i can i'll be coming home as soon I, as really I to like stay yeah. long term or i gotta go home see my family um mm -hmm. they've obviously had it pretty rough as as most people have um through lockdown and everything and just the different just where they're at in life so i need to go back and give them all hugs and make sure everything's going good you know I'm psyched for the um for a potential travel bubble bubble to open. I hope it happens. Yeah. Um, like New Zealand, Australia, Singapore, or some shit, so we can go to Evolve MMA for some training. Oh, that'd be amazing. That'd be good. And I've been but yeah, who, who knows? Life life feels crazy at the moment, eh? Like with um, it's hard to make plans. Where everything is, yeah. I know it's hard to make plans. You know, I mean, we're we're obviously in a kind of fortunate position here in New Zealand due to our geographic isolation and the way our governments handle things, but. You know, in the paper today, two new community cases of the new strain. So, yeah, how does uh, I want to know how that happens? How yeah, does that happen? Know. Like, where does it go? And where does it, how does it come back? Everyone's like trying to s smash whatever MP or whichever border security official, or whatever, but humans, by fucking definition, are fallible. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Everyone's trying their best in a difficult time, in an unprecedented sort of, you know, series of events. And, I don't know. Fucking viruses are tricky little buggers that you can't, yeah. you know, all the best it's laid plans aren't always going to work. So I don't know. I'm just psyched on hopefully getting a, a vaccine rollout sooner. Rather. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Is and that happening in Australia? Um, I don't I haven't actually been following it too much. Ever since I came back after the second lockdown, I've just kind of had my head down and just been trying to work. But I I heard something about vaccines coming out, but the, the rollout was very slow for some reason. I'm not sure what why that is. Um, because we were talking about um, touring plans 
and most bands were kind of thinking like April, May mm -hmm. might be with in considering a, a vaccine rollout that would be happening now. But because that isn't happening, um, everything's just going to get pushed further and further back. Um, so yeah, who knows? Let's see what happens. Yeah, to finish, to finish, five albums you're listening to right now. Um, bad, bad, not good. I can't remember the name of the, the album. Oh yeah, they're good. I don't know them either. I don't know them that well, but I like what I've heard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, new Bring Me, or it's not really new anymore, is it? Yeah, that album. The last sick. Bring Me album. Teardrops is on constant rotation. Oh, it's a nice time. Um, I was listening to Juice World, man. I'm like so shook. At <laughs> I'm sorry. That I'm sorry to ruin your day, dog. I shouldn't be laughing at this. Homeboys did. It's just like, it's I'm crazy. sorry, Juice. It's really sad. I don't know why I'm laughing. I'm just, I'm just so Shocked. surprised. Yeah. yeah. No, he's a young brother who's, yeah, he's, he's, he's gone. Yeah, the neighborhood. Um, always go back to them at the moment. So as my um, and just the whole entire catalog is what I've been going back to. And I just started listening to an Australian band called Gang of Youths. Okay. Have you heard I of them? No, no. It's just kind of like an indie band, I guess. Oh yeah. And then um, band called Speed from Sydney. Have you heard them? I have not. Don't need very very good them. hardcore band. All right, I'll very find very it. good. Yeah, brother. Um, how can people find you? I'm hiding on the internet these days. I don't really like to be in the public light too much. Oh, I so don't, um, don't 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 come find blind. me on it. Yeah, don't, don't come find yeah, me on Instagram. How to find you? Don't find me. <laughs> Please don't try. Um, eventually, there'll be an Instagram page set up for the Muay Thai gym. Yeah, cool. um, called Foundation. So maybe maybe one day you better find that. You can find me on Twitter, but I barely use it anymore. I'm just yeah. Well, I'm out. I'm out there. If you find me, you find me. I love that. <laughs> All right, bro. You take care and give my love to all the homies over there, huh? Of course. Okay. Thanks for this. Appreciate You're it. You're welcome. It was really fun. Okay. Bye.